and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to make an acorn bag. I think I want to do a drawstring top, a nice long strap, and then a nice rounded bottom with a little peg at the bottom to resemble an acorn. I found these adorable oak leaf felted bits in my bits and bobs and I decided I want to make a bag to go with them to make it, you know, a nice fall project. So if you'd like to come along with me as I make an acorn bag, keep watching. For this project, you'll need some yarn. I'm gonna be using this brown yarn that I dyed with onion skins, iron mordanted onion skins. This is a wool yarn. I'm also going to be using a darker brown. I just haven't figured out which one yet. You're also going to need a crochet hook. I'll be using a 5.5 millimeter hook for this project. You'll also need some scissors as well as a yarn needle to weave in your ends. So gather your supplies and let's jump in. We're going to start with the light brown yarn. And first things first, create a slip knot. From here, chain three. One, two, and three. Now, if you have a stitch marker, this is a good time to use it. I'm gonna loop my stitch marker around the chain three so that it just sort of sits on top of my chain. Now we're going to join the round with a slip stitch. So the first chain we created, or the third chain from the hook, one, two, and three, we're going to do a slip stitch to join that round. Now where that stitch marker is, that's the center of our little donut we've created, our little round. So for round number one, we're gonna start with a chain one. Now working into the spot where the stitch marker is, we're going to put eight single crochets. There's one, there's two, three, and eight. The chain stitch that we started the round with is going to also make up a single crochet. So with our eight single crochets and our chain one, we end up with a round of nine stitches. I'm gonna join the round with a slip stitch, and now we've got our first round for our project. For round number two, we'll start with a chain one. From here, we're going to put one single crochet in each stitch around. At the end of this round, you should still have nine stitches in your round. That's eight single crochets and one chain stitch to make nine single crochets in the round. Here I am at the end of round number two. I'm going to just slip stitch into the chain one to join my round. For round number three, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We'll start with a chain one, and then we're going to single crochet into the stitch at the base of that chain one and then we'll put one single crochet in each stitch around. At the end of this round, you should still have nine stitches in your round. Here I am at the end of round number three. I'm gonna slip stitch at the top of the chain one to join my round. For round four, this is gonna be our last small round. We'll start with a chain one, and then again, we're just gonna put one single crochet in each stitch around. Here I am at the end of round number four. I'm gonna close up the round with a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain one to begin round number five. Now, before we get into round number five, I'm going to turn the work inside out and then with the yarn tail, I'm going to load it up into my yarn needle and I'm just going to weave the end in at this point. This is gonna be easier to do now than it is to do at the end of the project. So I'm going to go ahead and weave the yarn around the hole that we started our project with, just to get rid of the end and also to close up that initial hole to make sure there is nothing that's gonna fall out of your bag. This is gonna be a tiny little satchel, but still we want it to be secure. And there we go. Now that we've got that all woven in, I can trim off the end of that tail and we can turn the work back right side out. Now let's get into round number five. For round number five, we're going to get started with our increases. So we're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around, just two single crochets in each stitch around. Remember though, the chain one we started our round with counts as a single crochet. So the last stitch of the round, we're just gonna be putting one single crochet in. I'll show you what I mean when I get there. 
Here I am at the end of the round. I'm gonna put my last single crochet into the final stitch for a total of 18 stitches in the round, nine stitches for those first four rounds. And then since we doubled it, now we've got 18 stitches in the round. And then we're going to chain one. And now for round number six, we're going to start with one single crochet in the first stitch. And then we're going to do one single crochet in the second stitch. And then in this third stitch, we're gonna do two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And then in the next stitch, we'll do one single crochet. And in the stitch after that, we'll do two single crochets. There's one and there's two. In the stitch after that, just one single crochet. And in the one after that, two single crochets. At the end of this round, you should have 27 stitches in the round. I'll see you at the end of round number six. Here I am at the end of round number six. I'm gonna start round number seven with a chain one, and then I'm gonna put one single crochet in each stitch around. So at the end of round number seven, you should still have 27 stitches in the round. Here I am at the end of round number seven, and at this point, the bottom of our acorn looks like a tiny little sombrero. Ooh, do you hear that lightning? Or maybe a, if we flatten out the top, a little cowboy hat. That would fit on my birds really well right now. But we're not gonna do that. We're doing the bottom of an acorn. Now for round number eight, we're gonna start with a chain one. We'll single crochet into the base of the chain one, single crochet into the next stitch. And then in the following stitch, we're gonna do two single crochets. There's one and there's two. Then we're going to single crochet one time into each of the next two stitches. There's one and there's two. And now in the next stitch, we're going to do two single crochets. There's one and there's two. Then in the next two stitches, we'll do one single crochet in each. And then in the next stitch, two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And we're gonna continue that repeat all the way around for round number eight. At the end of round number eight, you should have 36 stitches in the round. Here I am at the end of round number eight. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch. And then for round number nine, I am going to just put one single crochet in each stitch around. So at the end of round number nine, you will still have 36 stitches in the round. I'm gonna just zoom through round number nine because it's just a round of single crochets. Here I am at the end of round number nine. I'll just join my round with a slip stitch and then chain one. Now for round number 10, I'm going to put a single crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the second stitch, and a single crochet in the third stitch. Now in the fourth stitch, I'll do two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And then I'll do three single crochets, one, two, and three. And then in the following stitch, two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And then in the next three stitches, one single crochet. There's one, there's two, and there's three. And then in the following stitch, two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And I'm gonna continue that repeat all the way around for round number 10. I'll see you when I get to the end of round number 10. At the end of round 10, by the way, you should have 45 stitches in your round. Here I am at the end of round number 10, just putting my last stitch in and then I will slip stitch to join my round. Now it's looking like a larger sombrero. I promise it's gonna end up acorn shaped, just believe. Now for round number 11, we're going to do another round with just one single crochet per stitch all the way around. So at the end of round number 11, you should still have 45 stitches in your round. I'm gonna just zoom through round number 11 and I'll see you at the end of the round. Here I am at the end of round number 11. It's looking kind of boob-like right now, but just bear with me. It's gonna turn into an acorn. For round number 12, I'm gonna start with a chain one and then I am going to single crochet all the way around. So another round with no increases, round 11 and 12 will be single crochet all the way around, one single crochet in each stitch for a total of 45 stitches in the round. I'll see you at the end of round number 12. Here I am at the end of round number 12. I'm gonna join my round with a slip stitch and then chain one. Now for round number 13, I'm going to single crochet into the first four stitches. There's one, two, three and four. And then in the fifth stitch, I'm gonna put two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And then I'll single crochet into the next four stitches. There's one, two, three, 
and four. And then in the next stitch, I'll put two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And I'm gonna complete that repeat all the way around for round number 13. Here I am coming up to the end of round number 13, just putting my last two single crochets in, and then I'm gonna join my round with a slip stitch. Now for round 14, I'm gonna start with a chain one, and then I'm gonna single crochet one time in each stitch around. At this point, you'll have 54 stitches in the round. Now for round number 14, 15, and 16, I am going to single crochet one time in each stitch around. So no increases for the next three rounds. I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's just single crochets and I will see you at the end of round number 16. Here I am at the end of round number 16. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch and chain one. I was originally planning on doing another round of increases at this point, but I think that this is going to do better if I can make it go up straight a little bit more before we increase. So I think I'm going to do a another five rounds. So I'm going to do round 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21, all in single crochets with no increases, and then we'll put in another increase. So we just did uh, four rounds with no increase five rounds. We just did five rounds with no increase. We're going to do another five. So 10 rounds total of just single crocheting around. So I will meet you back here at the end of round number 21. And then we're going to put in another round of increases to continue that acorn shape. Again, I know it looks like a boob right now. It's not going to look like a boob. It's going to look like an acorn for real, for sure. A hundred percent. I just have to keep believing that because right now that is not the vibe we're giving, but it's going to give acorn. So don't worry. Just trust the process. I'll see you at the end of round number 21. All right, here is how it's looking at the end of round number 21. It is still boob-like, but don't worry, we're gonna get to an acorn point soon. All right, so for round number 22, we're gonna start with a chain of one. Then we're going to put a single crochet into the first five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. And then in the next stitch, we're gonna put two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And then we'll put one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And then in the next stitch, we'll put two single crochets. There's one and there's two. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around, five single crochets and then two single crochets in the next stitch, all the way for round number 22. At the end of round 22, you should have 63 stitches in the round. Here I am at the end of round number 22. I'll put my last single crochet in and then I'm gonna slip stitch the round together. And then for round number 23, I'll start with a chain one. And then for round number 23, I'm going to single crochet around. Now from round number 23 all the way up to round number 29, I'm just going to single crochet around. No increases anymore, just single crochet around for round number 23 all the way up to round number 29. I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's all the same single crochets and I will meet you at the end of round number 29. All right, so here is how it's looking at round number 29. We can see we've got acorn shape now, the bottom of the acorn. Now it's time for us to add the top of the acorn and I want it to be darker, but I can't seem to find a dark brown in my stash and I don't want to go buy new yarn for this. So I'm going to use this hand dyed green, brown and maroon and then I'm going to pair it with this dark gray and I'm kind of hopeful that something positive will happen from that. Let's just believe that it's going to darken it down enough to look like an acorn. So let me just finish up the round here and then I will join with a slip stitch, but with the slip stitch, I'm going to use my new colors as well. So I'm gonna trim my yarn here and then I will slip stitch the round together using all of the yarns. So the new yarn and the old yarn, just like that. There we go. And now I'm going to do one more round of single crochets. So round number 30 will be single crochets, but I'm going to do that with the new color before we switch in to some increases to create that round sort of 
cap shape, the bulb shape that you have for the cap of the acorn. So fingers crossed this comes off acorn-like, but I'm just going to single crochet around for round number 30. We'll see you at the end of round number 30. All right, here I am coming up to the end of round number 30. And now we are going to be switching in to double crochets for round number 31. And on top of that, we are also going to be adding another round of increases here. So I'm gonna start round 31 with a chain of two. And now in the first stitch, I'm going to do one double crochet. So we put one double crochet into the first stitch and then we're going to put a double crochet into the next five stitches. So we want our first six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now in the seventh stitch, we're going to put two double crochets. There's one and there's two. And then in the next six stitches, we'll put one double crochet in each. And then in the seventh stitch, we'll put two double crochets. So one, two, three, and then in the seventh stitch, we'll put two double crochets. There's one and there's two. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way around for round number 31. Here I am at the end of round number 31. I'm just gonna put my last double crochet in and then I will slip stitch the round to join. And we are going to go ahead and start round number 32 with a chain of two. Now for round number 32, I'm gonna be working in between the double crochets. So normally we would be putting our stitch through the top. We'd be putting our hook in through the top so that we would end up with a V on our hook. For this, we are going to yarn over and we're going to insert the hook in between the big posts of the double crochets. It's just gonna create a little bit of a different texture that I like in my double crochets. And now we are going to double crochet until we get to our increase stitch. So that should be seven stitches away. We've done one, two, three, four, and seven. Perfect. And now in the eighth stitch, we've got two double crochets coming out of one space. In that spot, we're going to put two double crochet stitches. There's one and there's two. And then we're gonna double crochet to the next increase. So that should be seven stitches away. And when we get to that increase, we're gonna put two double crochets in that space. And I'm gonna be repeating this all the way around. We're just trying to increase our circumference to create that rounded bubble shape for the cap of our acorn. All right, here I am at the end of round number 32. It's looking good. I'm gonna secure the round closed with a slip stitch and then chain two. Now for round number 33, I'm gonna follow the same increase again. We're trying to get this to be probably one more row out before we start doing any decreases. I'm trying to create like a, a rounded out side for our, the side of the, uh, you know what I'm trying to say for the acorn. So for this one, I'm going to start with a double crochet in the first stitch, and then I'm gonna be doing a double crochet in the next stitch all the way up to the next increase, which I think is gonna be eight stitches away. One, two, three, four, eight, perfect. And then in the ninth stitch, I'm gonna do two double crochets. There's one and there's two. Now I'll double crochet one time in each of the next eight stitches and then two double crochets in the ninth and then double crochet into each of the next eight stitches and then two double crochets in the ninth. And I will repeat that all the way around for round number 33, right? 33? 30, 31, 32, 33. Yeah, for round number 33. So I'm gonna zoom through the rest of this and I'll see you at the end of round 33. All right, here I am at the end of round number 33. It's starting to give acorn. It's doing what I want it to do, which is awesome. Now I'm gonna join my round with a slip stitch. I'm gonna chain two to start round number 34. And for round number 34, I'm just going to double crochet around. Actually, for round number 34 and round number 35, I'm just going to double crochet around uh, and I will meet you back here at the end of round number 35 to show you what we're going to do next to get this thing more, even more acorny. So I'll see you at the end of round number 35. 
All right, I'm coming up to the end of round number 35, and I feel like I'm getting the <laughs> acorn vibes that I was hoping for, which is good. This is the cap portion of the acorn now, and we're going to start on round number 36. We're going to do a decrease round. So here we go. I finished my round 35 of just double crochets. Now I'm going to chain two, and then I am going to decrease at the same rate that we in increased at last. So our last increase here, we did how many bef between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to do um, one double crochet and then I'm gonna double crochet two together. Let me zoom you in for this. So I'm still working on the spaces in between the stitches. I'm gonna double crochet two together. So how I do that is I yarn over, I insert into the stitch, I yarn over again and pull up a loop. And then I insert into the next stitch and I pull up a loop. Then I yarn over and pull through three of the loops. And then I yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. And that's how I do double crochet two together. So we've got that. And now we're going to double crochet into the next eight stitches. One, two, three, and eight. And now into the next two stitches, I'm gonna double crochet two together. And then I'll double crochet into the next eight stitches. And after that, I'll double crochet two together. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way around for round number 36. Here is how my acorn is looking after row round number 36. I'm running out of the dark gray yarn at this point. So I'm gonna swap it in for this gray and white stripe and then green stripe. I'm sure it'll look just fine and still very acorny. So I'm going to do a chain two to start round number 37. And for round number 37, I am going to continue with the same decrease that I was doing um, to match it up with the increase we were doing prior. So how that's gonna start is I'm going to do one double crochet. I'm gonna be incorporating my new yarn color Color in at this point also, which makes it a little more complicated. There we go. We'll do one, one double crochet, and then I am going to do a double crochet two together for the second stitches, like that. And then I'm gonna double crochet into the next seven stitches. One and seven. And then in the next two stitches, I'm going to double crochet two together. and then I'll double crochet into the next seven, and then I'll double crochet two together. And I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around for round number 37. All right, here I am at the end of round number 37. I'm gonna join the round with a slip stitch, and then I'm gonna chain two. And now for round number 38, I'm gonna continue with the same decrease. So I'm gonna do a double crochet in the first stitch, and then I'm gonna double crochet two together, for the second and third stitches. And then I'm gonna double crochet into the next six stitches. One, two, and six. And then in the next two stitches, I'm gonna double crochet two together. And then I'll double crochet into the next six stitches and then double crochet two together, double crochet into the next six stitches, double crochet two together. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way around for round number 38. All right, here I am at the end of round number 38. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch. And then for round number 39, I'm gonna start with a chain two, and then I'm gonna do a round of double crochets for round number 39. So no decreases this round, just a straight double crochet round. And I'll just zoom through this and then I will see you when we get to round 40. All right, here I am at the end of round number 39. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch, chain two, and then I'm going to double crochet in the first stitch. And then in the second and third stitch, I'm gonna double crochet two together. And then I'm gonna double crochet into the next five. One, two, and five. And then I'm gonna double crochet two together in the sixth and seventh. And I'm gonna repeat that repeat all the way around. So double crochet into five stitches, then double crochet two together for round number 40. All right, I've made it now to the end of round number 40. 
And I believe this is gonna be it for our decreases. I think we're done decreasing now. And now for rounds number 40 all the way up to round number 45, I'm just gonna double crochet around. So I'm gonna put one double crochet stitch in each stitch around for round 41, two, three, four, and 45. So this part is just going to be a straight up portion. And the reason being is this is going to be drawn together with a drawstring at the top to create that uh, acorn shape. So it's going straight up so that you can open the bag and put stuff into it. But afterwards, we're gonna add some drawstring, some eyelets to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom through these next five rows. And when I get to the end, Am I gonna have enough yarn for five rows? Well, let me do three row rounds to begin with. So I will come back to you at the end of round number 43, and we'll see if I've got enough yarn to keep going. If not, we'll do the eyelets at that point. All right, here's how my little acorn is looking at the end of round number 43. There's gonna be a drawstring holding this together. So now you can see the little acorn shape. How cute is this? So I'm running out of my brown and red yarn yarn now. So I'm going to actually switch to a different color, uh, more of a brownish green. So we're going to have three color changes in the cap portion, but I think that'll be okay. It'll come off just fine. So now I'm going to do a chain two for round number 44, and then I'm going to bring in my new color for my double crochets. And now I'm going to do two more rounds of double crochets, but this time with my new color in order to sort of bridge the gap on the color change. And then once I get around to round number 45, I am going to be putting in some eyelets. So let me just try this again, getting our new yarn in. So I'm not going to be doing anything different or fancy for these two rounds, just regular double crochets, but with the new color. So I'm gonna just zip through this part and I will see you when I get to the end of round number 45. 45, and then we're gonna put in some eyelets for our drawstring. So I'll see you at the end of round number 45. All right, here I am coming up to the end of round number 45, and now it's time to put our eyelets in in order to create the drawstring closure. So I'm gonna close up the round with a slip stitch, and then I'm gonna chain two. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a double crochet, hmm, in the first stitch and then I'm going to chain two, I'm gonna skip two, and then I'm going to double crochet into the next two stitches. And then I'm going to chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, and then double crochet into the next two stitches. And I'm gonna do that all the way around to create the little eyelets. One, two, for our drawstring to sort of weave in and out of. All right, here I am at the end of round number 46. I'm going to join my round with a slip stitch. And then for round number 47, I'm just gonna chain one. And now I'm gonna single crochet around for this round. So I'm gonna put one single crochet in the first double crochet stitch. And then in the chain two space, I'm going to put two single crochets. And then in the double crochets, I'll put one single crochet in each of those. And then I'm gonna put two single crochets in the chain two space, and then a single crochet in each of the double crochet spaces. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way around. And this is just going to sort of strengthen up the edge of the work. All right, here I am at the end of the round. I put one and then I'll put my second single crochet in there. And then I'm gonna join the round with a slip stitch. And that is it for this portion of the bag. So I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm gonna pull my loop through here. And then with my yarn needle, I am going to weave in the end so that I don't have to deal with that later. All right, now the end is all woven in. I know it doesn't look like it makes sense right now, but when we have the drawstring done up, it's gonna look like a little acorn. Now let's make the drawstring. So I wanna add some strength to the drawstring. So I'm going to add some white cotton yarn to go with it because my main yarn is wool. And then I am also going to add this darker blue-green wool. So we're gonna be doing the drawstring in the green-brown we finished with 
a green, blue, brown wool, and a white cotton. And I think those three together should create a really nice, strong drawstring. So to get started, we are going to be using the same hook that we've been using the whole project, our 5.5 millimeter, and I am going to start with a slip knot. Now I am going to chain a whole heck of a lot. I think I'm gonna chain about 100 stitches, possibly more. I'll let you know when I get to the end of my chain. One, two, three, 99 and 100. Yeah, 100 should be perfect. We want it to be wide enough that it can weave in and out of the bag at its largest stretch. And that for sure will. This is about probably just a little over two feet long. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip stitch down this chain. So in the second chain from the hook, one and two, I'm going to do a slip stitch. And then from here, I'm just going to put one slip stitch in each stitch all the way down this chain to complete our drawstring. All right, here I am down at the end of the chain. I'm gonna put my last slip stitch in and then I will trim my yarn here and then I'll pull that through. And I'm just gonna tie a little knot to secure my ends together here. I wonder if I should leave a tassel. Could tie a little tassel here. That might be cute. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to, instead of weaving my ends in, I'm going to just tie a little knot here to create a tassel. So I'll tie a knot first. Hmm, how do I want it to look? Do I want lots of threads or just a few? Yeah, that might be cool. Okay, so I'm gonna just loop it around like this and then I will try to. I'm gonna tie a knot with that loop. There we go. Then I can just trim these ends and I can trim those ends. And now we've got a nice little tassel on the end of the tie. On the other tie, on the other end of the other tie rather, I think I'm going to attach one of these oak leaves. I think that'll be really cute there. But first, let's weave this thing in. So I'm just going to take the little um, drawstring here and I'm going to weave it in and out of these eyelets. All right, and there we go. It's woven into the other side. And now if we draw it closed, you can see we get that acorn shape. Well, we will when it's upright. Now it's time for us to make some straps for this bag. All right, in my stash, I found this super chunky, probably like a number five or a number six weight yarn, maybe number six even. I'm gonna pair it with the brown that we used for the body of the acorn to make our strap. So now with these two yarns paired together, I am going to start with a slip stitch. Then I am going to chain two Hundred. It's gonna be a little bit of a snug chain because this is a super chunky yarn, but I'm gonna chain 200. When I get to the end of the chain, I'll meet you back here to show you how long that is and what it's looking like. Four, five, six, seven, 198, 199, and 200. All right, at this point it is, I'm gonna say five feet long. Might be a little too long even, but I think that's okay. I think too long is gonna be okay because we can always tie it as a shorter. Yeah, I think five feet is about how long it is right now. Um, so now what I'm going to do in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to do a slip stitch. And same way I did with the drawstring, I'm just going to slip stitch down this chain. It's going to be a thin strap for this bag because I want it to look whimsical. So I'm just going to slip stitch down the chain, which is gonna take <laughs> a while and I will see you when I get to the end of the chain where it's gonna be time to put this strap on our bag. All right, here we are at the end of the strap. I've just put my last slip stitch in, can cut my yarn and draw that last stitch through. And then I'm gonna tie these ends together. And oh gosh, now it's just time to attach these straps and then we are going to be done this bag. So here's what the strap looks like. It's a nice thick sort of rope texture. And now we have to attach it to our acorn bag. All right, so it's the next day now and I have figured out how I want to put the strap onto the bag. I put one of them on off camera as I was figuring it out and now I'm gonna show you how I did it for the second strap. So because it was a little bit long, I decided to attach it with a swirl. I thought that would be a cute way to attach it on and I'm gonna be stitching it down with a needle and thread. So here is the strap. I'm putting one on the opposite side and here's what I did with some safety pins 
these to sort of show you. I'm gonna undo them so that I can show you how I put this strap on. So uh, directly across from the other side, let's open up the bag just so we can have a flat surface to work on. I'm going to swirl up the strap so that it's like a little swirl because I think that looks cute. Uh, and then we're gonna have it come up straight, a little bit whimsical, you know? So I'm gonna just make sure we are at the opposite side. And then I'm gonna put it right here where I have the yarn color change. And I'm just going to start stitching this down in place in this spot. So I've got a needle and thread here. I'm just using some basic cotton thread for this on a sharp needle. I'm gonna start by just sort of inserting it through that strap to get myself started. I tied a knot at the end just so that it can hold. And then I'm just gonna start with some really big broad stitches for it at first, just to get it tacked down. And then we're gonna go around a few times. So I'm just going up and down through the work, trying to get this through some of these stitches in the back, just in order to get this tacked down to begin with. And then I'm gonna go around the entire swirl with some basic stitches just to make sure that it will all stick together and be actually structurally strong. So there we go, now it's tacked down. So now the swirl won't run away while we're trying to stitch it. There we go. And then now I'm going to just sort of push through some of these stitches and pull it nice and tight so that there's nothing visible. We don't want these little threads to show up. So I'm just gonna pull them tight, just like this. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around this swirl, going down through the swirl, then through the bag fabric, then up again through the swirl. And when I pull it tight, it'll pull it all together. So you can see the thread, but when I pull it tight, the thread disappears. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. And this is gonna be where it goes up. So I'll stop stitching that side down now, and I'll just work down around this side. Not a ton of thought put into this, not at all out of rhyme or reason, I'm just stitching it down. If you wanna use yarn to stitch it down and a yarn needle, that is totally up to you. It can totally work, but it won't be as invisible as this way. I I'm doing it like this because I don't really want the stitches to be visible in the end. And I'm using a cotton thread um, to make it a little bit more structurally strong. Hope that makes sense. So for the rest of this strap, I am gonna just zoom through this and then it's gonna be time for us to add our oak leaf for a little extra decoration. So I'll see you in a minute once I finish sewing on this strap. All right, I've got the strap sewn on now on both sides. And then we've got our drawstring in the front. And now I want to add on an oak leaf. I think that will tie this all together to make it obvious that this is for sure supposed to be an acorn. Uh, and I think I wanna sew it on the edge of one of the drawstrings like this. Should I sew it? Like two sewn together maybe? And like stitch around the entire outside or will that be a bit much? That's kind of cool. What do you think? I think like this. Okay, I'm gonna stitch this down. So I'm just gonna pin it in place. Maybe I'll trim off the the stem portion, and then we'll stitch this in place like that. And then I am going to do a whole bunch of, I think I'll do blanket stitches for this one. Let's get this done. All right, there's our last stitch. I'm just gonna weave my end in with some basic stitches up the work, and then I'll weave the rest of the end just through the top. That helped. This now is very obviously <laughs> an acorn with an oak leaf hanging off of it. I think this makes it extra cute. I am happy with how that tied this together. There, isn't that cute? Little oak leaf that'll hang off of the tie. So where it ties up. And guess what, friends? Just like that, our acorn bag is finished. I love how the straps look. I think by doing that little swirl, we added just a little bit of extra whimsy to this bag. We also shortened the straps considerably by adding that swirl. So now the strap is a perfect length to wear as a crossbody bag. I am obsessed with how this little oak leaf looks. I think it tied it together perfectly. With the drawstring top, we're able to open this up and have tons of room in this bag. It's actually a very spacious little satchel and you can hold all of your stuff in there. It maintains that structured shape as long as you've got something in it. Otherwise, it's a little more floppy, but still very cute. And then when you draw the drawstring closed, that's what creates the acorn top so that it's more reminiscent of an acorn. And then just in case there's any uh, confusion at all, we added that oak leaf 
to sort of tie it all together. I think this turned out so cute. I love that the single crochet made for a more opaque, more structured bottom. And then by doing the double crochet around the top, we end up with a bit more texture, which if you look at an acorn, the top does have a little bit more of a texture to it. So I think this will go great with lots of fall outfits. This will also do very well at the Renaissance Fair, where I am going to be some sort of whimsical woodland person. I think this is gonna work perfectly for that. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you like this one, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video. It really helps the channel and I would really appreciate it. Anyways, friends, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and thank you to everyone supporting the channel right now. Here is the list of all of the channel supporters. Thank you guys, you guys rock. If you would like to show your support for the channel, check out the links in the description down below. Down there you'll find everything you need to support the channel as well as all of the links to the tutorials that would be relevant if you're new to crochet. So if you wanna learn how to do the single crochet or the double crochet, crochet, or even the slip stitch. All of those tutorials will be linked down there. Like I said though, friends, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!